One of the advantages to slow travel is it really lets you experience a city in the ways that you don't get to do when you're running through really quick. We have visited Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia multiple times in the past, but always for like two or three days as a waypoint to somewhere else. This time we were there for seven weeks and fell in love with the city in ways we couldn't even have imagined beforehand. So we wanted to make a video about things to do. However, we came up with so many, we're gonna split it into two videos. So this is part one of things to do when you visit Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We're David and Rob, and we are taking what we are hoping will be a four year sabbatical to travel the world. We've lived in and traveled to over 75 countries and territories over the past 30 years, and we are here to share our unconventional life of long-term travel to give you an example of what is possible. So probably the best known landmark in Kuala Lumpur is going to be the Petronas Towers. Um, these are, it's a beautiful uh, pair of towers that was built in the 90s. At the time, it was the tallest building in the world. Um, it has since been outpaced by some, uh, several other, other, buildings. other buildings. But I just can't overemphasize how beautiful they are Gorgeous. and how wonderful it is to go see them. It, they're the kind of buildings, I mean, just the architecture of them, they're, they're made with like concentric circles and the lighting that they use just makes them beautiful at night. And so from like every angle all around the area, you're gonna take so many pictures of the Petronas Towers. And then at nighttime, they light them up. Sometimes it's just all in white. Sometimes they'll do the tops in different colors, red or blue or multiple different colors, depending on probably like what holiday is happening. Mm -hmm you're gonna take a lot of pictures. A lot. And they are just gorgeous. Yes. Um, if you do wanna take a, t a tour, you can go up into the buildings. There's the bridge that goes across, and I think you can go all the way up into the towers. I think so. We did it years ago when we were there, so we didn't do it again this time. Um, but we had some friends who went, I think because they're so popular now, you have to reserve a ticket ahead of time. Um, and then you're kind of locked into that. One of our friends booked a ticket and then wasn't able to make it and they just kind of lost the ticket. Um, so just be prepared. You're gonna have to plan that uh, pretty well out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, but even if you don't even wanna go up in the buildings, just going, there's a whole mall underneath with food and stuff. Um, but you're gonna take a lot of pictures yeah. of the buildings. And there's also a park if you go outside on the back side of the towers, there's a pretty large park. It has a, a running pathway that goes all around it. Um, lots of places to stop for water and a big playground and an island. Oh yeah, all of that, a swimming area. It's a pretty cool park. And right next to the towers, there is a giant fountain, very reminiscent of the Bellagio fountains in Vegas. And they do a show every night. Um, I think it starts around seven o'clock, but in the evenings, go when it starts to get dark, and we would spend the whole evening just sitting on the steps, yeah. talking with friends, and watching the show as it occurred every half hour. The shows, the, the music is really... <laughs> it's kind of all over the it's place. It's all over the place. You could have a rap song for one show, and classical for another show, and some traditional um, local music for another show. It was just you never knew what was coming next. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah. If you continue on in front of the towers, just a little ways away is a bridge called the Saloma Link Bridge. Um, I think it's relatively new. It wasn't there it wasn't when we first been there in the past. Um, but it's just a, it linked two neighborhoods together and they made this bridge beautiful and they covered it in lights. So it's very Instagram. It's become a big tourist kind of spot to go. Um, it, you know, it's just a bridge, but it is beautiful and you'll get some yeah, really I think pretty We pictures. were more impressed by it than we assumed we would be. Yeah, yeah. We had some friends who said, hey, we should go to this bridge. And we we're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah we should do that. And then we finally went. It was like, oh, yeah, we really enjoyed that we went. Um, right next to it also is a old Muslim cemetery 
We went there in the night to get the pictures of the bridge, so we didn't really get to check out the cemetery, but it does look like it's pretty cool if you wanted to go a little before it got dark, so you could check that out. Um, but definitely go after dark so you can get some good pictures of that bridge. <music> Just down the road from the Patronus Towers is the KL Tower. It's another huge landmark that you can't miss from anywhere in the city. It's the seventh tallest communications tower in the world. The top of the tower, um, the building at the very top, is about six stories high and it has restaurants and observation decks. And we didn't go up this time, but we've gone up in the past and really enjoyed the views from Gives up you there. some really good views. Yeah. They light the tower up at night, so from anywhere in the city you can see all kinds of crazy light. It's, it's, there's moving lights going up and down the side of the tower and the, and the top changes colors. Crazy it's, colors. It's, like... it's, it's really a lot of fun to watch, although sometimes it's just white or, or something, but, but generally it's a lot of fun to watch. They also do a lot of events at the tower. Um, the whole time we were there we would see different things going on. I think there was some kind of karaoke festival happening at one point that we didn't go to. Um, probably the funnest thing that we saw was they had a three-day event in which people leapt from the top of the tower and parachuted down to the ground. And people were jumping every like minute. Like, like, it, was yeah. it was just crazy. one after another for three days straight. It was amazing. We came and watched them and they would, you know, land right in front of the tower and they were as quickly as they could, they'd pack their bag up and, and go back up to the top and do up. it again. They must I who knows how many times they all jumped off. Oh. But it was it was a lot of fun and we spent a lot of time watching that. And I think there's an event where people can run to the very top of the tower. Um, it's, it's a very active place and it's a great place to go. There's also things to do right around the tower. At the very bottom, there is a small, very sad looking zoo. I probably, we didn't go. I would probably not recommend going. Those kind of zoos kind of make me sad. It makes me sad. Um, but that is there. There's something called the Upside Down House, which we also didn't actually go into. It's just small, but it looks like a house that has been built upside down. And like the windows and the doors are upside down and flowers are growing toward the ground from the windowsills. Like it's, kind of just a little novelty place, I guess. Um, but then right behind that, it's, there's actually a large park. I think it's called the Eco Park. Um, and you can go there and they've got like a canopy and there's monkeys and lots of birds. <laughs> Um, they just, like right before we got there, they instituted a uh, entrance fee. So I, do you remember what it was now? I think it was like 6 or $10 a person. Mm -hmm. We've been there in the past, so again, we didn't pay to go back. You know, if you haven't been before, I think it's worth checking out. It's, it's, kind of, it's a big, fun park, especially if you want to look for birds. There's not a whole lot of places to look in Kale Center, um, so that's one place you could look. Mm -hmm. Also in the central area is Merdeka Square. It's this huge square surrounded by beautiful buildings. It's really a nice place to spend some time. Um, in the middle of it, there's a big lawn where they used to play cricket. And it's also known as Independence Square. This is the location that Malaysians declared their independence from England. And they pulled down the British flag and put up their own Malaysian flag. And I don't know if it's the same um, flagpole, that was back then, but you will notice this massive flagpole in the square. And when we had been there in the past, it was the largest flagpole in the world. And now when I look it up, it says one of the largest <laughs> flagpoles in the world. So who knows where it ranks on the list anymore. But it's a really place to, it's a really great place to hang out. At night, like vendors come out and they'll have snacks and everywhere in Asia they have these little glow-in-the-dark toys that they throw <laughs> in the sky and the, they kind of float down and the kids love them. Um, so it's a, kind of a nice place to go. Um, but why you really want to go at night is because right next door um, along the river is what they call the River of Life. And there's a small, it's like where two rivers come together and there's a little fountain show that goes out in the middle of the water. But what really makes it interesting is they pump out like 
I don't know if it's smoke or steam or how that works, but it just like fogs over the entire river and they use this crazy intense cobalt blue lighting and the whole river lights up and they play music. Uh, just like at the fountain show at the Patronus Towers, mm -hmm. it's crazy music. Like one time we heard the theme song from Star Wars, like it's kind of just eclectic. And But a lot of people go and there's cafes and stuff that you can go to, but mostly the people just go and watch this crazy blue light take over the river. Um, it's kind of fun just to go check out. Yeah, and even if you don't go at night, the river itself has pathways that go all the way along it through town. So you can take a long walk up and down the river if you want that also. <laughs> Another can't miss thing when you go to Kuala Lumpur is the Batu Caves. The feature that you will not miss are the stairs. They go, the, the cave itself is way up on the top of a hill and there's a staircase that goes all the way to the top. And those have been painted in rainbow colors and they're really quite spectacular to look at. That's kind of a new addition thanks to Instagram, I suspect. Um, we're just a, a couple years ago, they really decked it out in really colorful paint just to make sure you can get some really great pictures. Yeah. Monkeys line the stairway and <laughs> torment you as you go up, so <laughs> watch out for them. And another feature right next to the stairs that you can't miss is this massive gold statue of Lord Murugan, and I believe it is the tallest statue in Malaysia. One thing to remember is that it is a religious site. There, are, It is a temple for the Tamil Hindus, um, and so you want to make sure you dress appropriately. The cave at the top is awesome. It is a huge open cavern. And throughout it, there's different temples. And while you're there, it is, like he said, a working religious site. And so people are there actually worshiping as you walk through these temple areas. Once you've seen the caves, there are a couple of other things you can do right there. Um, one, pretty close to the top of the stairs is another cave called the Dark Cave that I think you can go like spelunking through, like a hard hat, you know, get a hard hat and take a tour through. Mm -hmm. However, it has been closed every time we have ever been there. I've heard people have done it, but I guess your miles will vary as whether it is open when you actually get to go there. Um, down at the bottom of the stairway, there's a whole bunch of vendors. And so if you want to get like snacks or little trinkets, there's going to be plenty of opportunity to do that. There are also two different caves at the bottom. One is called, oh, what's it called? The Cave Villa. And I've never been there. People kind of warn you against going there. I think there's some caves that might be pretty cool. However, they also have like a small zoo and apparently the animals are kept in pretty not great conditions. So anyone I've ever talked to is like, don't bother going there. It's just really uncomfortable. Um, however, way over closer to where the commuter train drops off is another cave. I forget what it's called, but it is, They've basically built this cave system and they've put in all these statues of different Hindu gods and goddesses doing, you know, gods and goddess things, I guess. Um, and it's kind of cool. It, I think it costs five RM to get in. It was like just a little over a dollar. Um, it was closed the last time we went, so we weren't able to go, but we've been there in previous times and it's kind of just an enjoyable way to kind of walk through. Um, and from what I've heard, they keep decorating it more and more with lights and different displays. Um, so that, that might be something worth checking out. As far as getting there, you have several options. Um, a lot of people will take a tour from their hotel or something like that. However, it's really easy just to get an Uber. Uber is available in Malaysia and you can take that out to the caves themselves. Um, but probably the cheapest way, if you have a little extra time, there is a commuter train that goes from the central station up and it drops you off right at the door of the Batu Caves. The schedule of the train is a little erratic um, and so you kind of have to pay attention. We tried to find times and we really struggled. Um, we ended up taking an Uber there with some other friends and then we did ride the train back. We had to wait about 20 minutes for the train to get there because we weren't sure what time it was going to show up. I think there are times of the day where it runs like once an hour. Um, but if you can get the schedule, that can be a very inexpensive way uh, to get up there.
So as you can tell, we really enjoyed our time in Kuala Lumpur. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. Um, but like I said, we are barely scratching the surface here. So uh, we will be back next week with part two of some of the other things that we found to do in Kuala Lumpur. And there's some really good ones coming. So stick around and we will see you next week. That's pretty good. Let me do it one more time. Today.